Hey, 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 we're still in the middle of the temptation series and it's going really well. I want to remind you that these studies come out of my own personal searching and, and heart's desire to know God and to walk closely with him. And so what I share with you and that I'm excited about is because it's what God is saying to my heart. So from that, I just hope and pray that because it's speaking to me, perhaps it can be a word of encouragement to someone else. This is season 19, episode 413, title, Temptation Derailed. Subtitle, Key Strategies Against Subduction. Did you hear the title again? Temptation Derailed. Coming to the realization of your own vulnerability built into you as a human being to succumb to temptation because of your corrupted heart is the first step of success in resisting the subduction into temptation. The key to avoiding the allurement of temptation lies in developing a strong foundation of self-awareness, discipline, and reliance on the Holy Spirit and the equipping of your heart to flee temptation rather than trudging through it. It is a terrible thing to come to the point where you enjoy the enticement. Once you enter that state, the actual acting out of the temptation and committing the sin is just around the corner. Here are some key strategies in response to entering into temptation. Number one, know your triggers. Now, at first you're going to say, well, Kenny, that sounds like some sort of a new age thought. Listen to me, my friend. It's biblical to know your triggers. Understand what situations, emotions, or thoughts tend to lead you into temptation. And I remind you that what tempts you is not necessarily a temptation to someone else. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses and things that we're interested in and things that we are not. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15 in the NIV version says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So you and I need to examine our own hearts and minds and ask ourselves, what are the things that we find desirous that are evil? What are the things within our thinking that are enticements to sin? Know your triggers. Number two, practice self-discipline. Cultivate the ability to control your impulses and desires even when faced with challenging situations. And again, you may say, well, Kenny, that sounds like a new age practice. But listen, my friend, the Bible clearly teaches that if you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you do have the power to practice self-discipline. I've talked about this in past podcasts. We are not without hope and power. Self-discipline is a key fundamental gift given by the Holy Spirit to you at salvation. The fruit of the Spirit, talked about in Galatians chapter 5, in verses 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says that for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28 says, Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 says everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. But there it is that concept of the person going into strict training. That talks about bringing their body under control, bringing their mind under control. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Do you see how this element of self-control plays into being the type of person you need to be who is loving? Number three, set boundaries. Establish clear boundaries for yourself to avoid situations or environments where temptation is likely to arise. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. In other words, put up guardrails, set boundaries. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, it says, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. 
So my friends, the concept of setting boundaries is not some sort of new age mysticism. It is biblical. I think there is a reason why these first three points of know your triggers, practice self-discipline, and set boundaries have been condemned in times past is because the devil doesn't want you to take responsibility and feel a sense of responsibility for your own actions. And so therefore, just this concept that we're just kind of floating downstream and we're out of control, you know, heaven help us. No, God says, I have placed in you the capability to do these things. Number four, develop healthy habits. Focus on building God-honoring healthy habits and routines that support your well-being and strengthen your resistance to temptation. Instead of giving in to temptation, find healthy ways to cope with stress, boredom, and other triggers. By biblical meditation on God's Word, you know, there is a proper way to meditate, and it's on God's Word, to mull over God's Word. Prayer exercise, and creative activities. The old truism is true for a reason, idle hands of the devil's workshop. Galatians 5 verses 16 and 17 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. My friend, so develop healthy habits. Number five, seek support. Surround yourself with supportive friends, family members, or mentors who can encourage you and hold you accountable. Here are some Bible verses that highlight the importance of community and support from others in your journey of faith and holiness. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25 says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Galatians 6 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5 says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. My friend, God has designed the Christian to be a part of a community where they can support, encourage, and uplift one another in their walk with God and the pursuit of holiness. Number six, stay alert. Live with a heightened awareness of the treachery of temptation, the fallibility of the heart, and the necessity to rely on the provisions of God to successfully navigate through the times of temptation to safety. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 12 and 13 says, So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. My friend, by incorporating these God-given strategies into your life, the Holy Spirit of God will empower you to avoid the treachery of temptation and continue to walk in power and faithfulness with God. And with that, my friend, I bid you peace.